Um, when an object is rotating, um, it also has some kinetic energy. Uh, it turns out that there's a relatively straightforward formula for that as well. So suppose that we have an object like this that's rotating with some angular velocity omega. Uh, well, we can use sort of the standard physicist trick and break up the object into a bunch of little pieces. Um, and for each individual little piece, if we consider that piece, it will have some mass, um, which I'll call mi because it's object i, you know, I'm just kind of counting through the pieces, um, and it'll have some velocity. So the velocity um, of each piece may be different if they're different distances from the center. Okay, so um, we can calculate the total kinetic energy by just adding up one half mv squared for each, so one half mi vi squared. Okay, we're adding up all of the little pieces. Okay, so um, we can break up um, this expression in a useful way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, rewrite the mass part, but then I'm going to take the velocity and write it in terms of the angular velocity. Okay, so um, velocity vi can be written as the omega of that piece times r of that piece, and that entire quantity is squared. All right, well, um, it turns out that the omega for each piece is the same because the entire object is rotating with the same angular speed. So I can take this expression and I can rewrite it so that I have the sum of one half mi ri squared times omega squared. And omega is the same for each piece. So um, to rearrange this slightly again, if I have all these terms that have a one half, I can factor that out. And then I have the sum over i of um, mi ri squared times omega squared, which again is the same for each piece. And we can recognize this um, factor in the middle as just being the moment of inertia, the sum of mr squared for each little piece. So at the end, we get that the kinetic energy is equal to one half i omega squared for rotation. All right, and one of the things that is really important to notice here is that, again, this is a scalar, so it's just an amount measured in joules. Um, and it's the same type of energy as the other kinetic energy formula that we had. It's just specifically for objects that are rotating. So this isn't something new, it's just a new formula. Okay, and what that means is that if an object is both rotating and moving with some sort of translational velocity, um, we can actually add together one half i omega squared and one half mv squared to get the overall energy of the um, object. You might be a little worried that um, individual pieces will be moving um, you know, in the same direction as the center of mass or the opposite direction at various points in the motion. Um, it turns out that that doesn't matter. So um, even though that will be the case, we don't have to worry about it. When we add together the energies, that will work out just right. Um, some parts will count a little extra, some parts will count a little less, and we end up with exactly the right answer.